I'm talking relationships Worth more than money No time for the fig or the phony Tweezy jump the gym It's so evident Link up with the game I'm talking relationships Alright, we back Episode 23 23? 23 And you know, I'm Tweezy Who do I have to the right of me? Hey, everyone. I'm Paper Doll. So, Nicole, that's my real name. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, um, we was talking um, through text message, well, through DMs on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And we found out that we both were in the military. So, kudos to that. Shout out to you. Shout thank out to you. you. Um, and thank you for serving. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's it's always something, like, I feel like when you when you meet people, and I met you through Taz. Cause Taz, yes, like Taz. I always like Taz was always telling me about you or whatever, and I was like, yo, she dope. Like I got a, I got an interview. I got an interviewer because she, she's always in some dope cosplay outfits, and I'd be like, how? The first question is, how did you get into cosplay? So when I was younger, my mom she collects Barbie, so she always took me to Barbie conventions, and my dad big comic book geek, so he would take us to. And my sisters, because I have three other sisters, would take us to conventions and they would dress us up all the time. Of course, I fell in love with comics yeah. and I just continued dressing up. But I get to dress up the way I want to right. versus, hey, y'all are going to dress up as some Trekkies. And I'm not a Star Trek fan. Oh, man. That was <laughs> like, I couldn't stand Star Trek. I couldn't stand it at all. It was like the only thing that ever came on TV that wasn't like a cartoon. So it was yeah. like. I'm I'm Star Wars. Yeah. But Star Trek. What was buddy name? Spot. What was his Spot, name? Yeah. The, one with the, the ears. What was the one yeah, with the that's... ears? <laughs> what was the what was the dude with the like like mud pie face? I don't know. He ugly. <laughs> yeah. Super super ugly. Super ugly. That was that was nap time. Every time that came on, I was like, oh, yeah. I'm going to bed. So how long how long you been doing it for? <sighs> well, I would say probably 2014. That's when I really start going on my own to conventions and dressing up. But if we say, like, all together with my parents, that was, okay, yeah. We'll, we'll just say since 2014. <laughs> okay, okay. So, 10 years. Now, like, Ooh. how many conventions are there? Because I, I know cosplay is, like, correct me if I'm wrong, it's it's like a, I, I can't even explain it. What what is, Like, what is cosplay? So, every year, you know, you have Halloween. People dress up as their favorite character, something scary or something funny or something cool. Well, conventions, it's to, like, meet other people. You have panels and fun activities, after parties, and you can either dress up or just wear, you know, regular clothes. And you dress up as your favorite character. You'll meet other people like, oh, wow, you like Star Trek? I like Star Trek. Look at my outfit. Yeah. And there's so many. And it's, like, back to back. You can literally go, like, every weekend if you're traveling around. But in the DMV area, we do have some of the biggest events every year. First weekend of January, MAGFest, Valentine's Weekend, KatsuCon, BlurCon, which is in March, which is Black Nerds. So you can see oh, more people like that. Oh, that's us. what Blurred means. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, Blurred is Black Nerd. Nice, nice. So mm-hmm. before the, the cosplay, let's go back to when Nicole, like, where you from? Like, tell me about, like, your childhood, like, coming up, and you know, how you started. <laughs> So both my parents, they're Marines. Right. And of course. And they met overseas and I was born in Japan. Okay. So I spent some early years over there, then came to DC and traveled around, but then came right back to DC and that's where I had high school and part of my adult life. And I joined the military okay. army. All Hora. right. School, oh. right? It's cool, right? Yeah. Hora. Yeah, yeah. So I, I usually claim DC because that's high school to circling back now. I'm more comfortable here. So were you in Japan that whole time from all the way to middle school to high school? Like from- oh no, I probably left around maybe four years old, mm-hmm. and then Arizona and a lot of the West Coast. And the West Coast was nice, but it really wasn't me. And then when yeah. my parents moved to North Carolina, and then DC by high school. Okay, what and school I, you went to? I graduated from Oxon Hill. Okay. I went to Spangon in mm-hmm. D.C. for the longest. And then 11th grade, went to Oxnard Hill. Okay. 
Now, when you um having a a, a a mom and dad as a Marine, right? How was how was life like? Ooh, was it strict? Strict. Had to be home before the street lights. Mm-hmm. Mind you, I graduated at 17. I'm like, hey, I have a job. Yeah. And it, oh, you better be home before it gets dark because right. the door is locked, top locked. You can't get in. And I'm like, dang, how do I get home for the job? Like, no boys calling the house. You and your sisters all together. So I'm like, dang, we all got to stick together, all four of us walking around. Yeah. My dad didn't play. He was like, hey, just y'all. Yeah. And them streetlights, you know, wintertime, them things start coming on at like five super in the afternoon. Early. Yeah, super and you early. speed into the house. Yeah. Dang. It was strict. So um, what you been, are you the oldest? I am the oldest. Okay. How is it with the siblings? Like, how, how are you with your sister? We're all two years apart. And we get along. We all see each other. Mm-hmm. They they my best friends. That's who I'm mostly with. Nice, nice. Um, what else? What else we got? Uh, I seen you did like this this picture. Um, I don't know what it was like. It was like a like Candyman. You was kind of dressed oh, up like Candyman, but you was yes. like the female version. Is that like a, a movie that you was taking a picture for, or was that just like a? a... Oh, that was for cosplay because now that it's October, mm-hmm. it's kind of like the Olympics for us cosplayers. Okay. And I'm real big into scary movies and the horror genre. Mm-hmm. So once October hits, all cosplayers, we're just throwing out Halloween content. And I have a lot of Halloween. So each day I've been just dropping new, um, some of my older cosplays until I drop the newer ones, which start next week. But that was Candyman. Okay. I, th- I thought I, I, I ain't yes. want to... That's why I'm like, let me ask, because I'm like, that look like the female version of Candyman. Then I think you said, like, say my name three times. Yeah. I seen that, and I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> but it was dope. Bees. Yeah. So how, how long does that take to, to get into that, like, costume and, like, makeup? Yeah, first you got to, like, just put that together and make it. So I, like, of course, I'm, like, watching Candyman a couple of times. I don't know how many times we said that name, so mm. we'll just say Candy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll watch the movie, see what the character's wearing. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this, but switch it up. Because he had, like, old-timey clothes. Mm-hmm. Find some, like, fake little bees. Because I was like, I can't make no bees. But, it, you know, put the costume together. And so I found, like, this yellow hot glue. And I was like, oh, wow, this looks like honey. Let me pour this on the hook, stick some of the bees. So it probably took me, like, maybe a week or two to put that together. And then I have, like, a bunch of contacts. I'm like, okay, boom, boom. It doesn't take too long to get into makeup. Once I do, like, a practice, try try to figure out how I want to look. Mm-hmm. Then the day of the shoot, I'm like, boom. I need, like, an hour and a half to get ready. Okay. And then meet at that location. Now, how, how long does it take for, like, each costume? Is it, like, a set? Like, you already got it down to the T? Or is it, like, the bigger the costume, <laughs> the longer it takes? Or... or like, how do you get creative like that? Like, what makes you? So, it um, I kind of got it down to a T, mm-hmm. where a lot of my cosplays, you'll see that they're, like, super different. But I literally shot, like, maybe three of them in the same day. I'll reach out to a photographer and be like, hey, give me a good three, four-hour block. And I change in and out quick, as long as the characters aren't too far off. Yeah. But if I'm doing a clown look, that's just that look for the day. Which I actually was able to do um, two looks in one day where I did the clown look. Mm-hmm. And I was doing Captain Spaulding from House of a Thousand Corps. Okay. Have you seen that movie? It's a scary movie. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> oh, I've I, I seen them pretty much yeah. all on, but some of them I had to go back and like think about. But once you say House of a Thousand Corps. Yes. Yeah, it's that. a little commercial. The clown guy that owns the fried chicken and gasoline. Yeah. I was doing that look. And I was like, oh, I'm also doing Ghostface from Scream. Let me do the makeup, shoot that, and then I'm wearing a mask so nobody will know. Yeah. But, oh, my gosh, it was hot. You sweating under the mask, the makeup dripping. Yeah, especially depending on where you shoot. And you you normally shoot outside? I prefer outside because I don't really like that whole studio, like, the get lighting. that, that JCPenney vibe. Yeah, the lighting and everything. Yeah, I feel like outside tells more of a story, but I will still do some studio. Mm-hmm. Now, you, you have a business... Correct. 
a business like um, Dollhouse. Yeah. Yes, it's kind of a business because we do a lot of promotions and some charity work. Mm -hmm. It's just a group of girls because we all were all around the same age. And then we have our day jobs and then we all like to cosplay. And I was, I, um, we all talked to each other. And we're like, hey, we're all doing the same thing. Um, we all just come together and we can all be guests at events. Because, yeah. you know, one person, I mean, three people are better than one. Right. If you're trying to put an event together, you're like, okay, who's going to get the food? Who's going to coordinate this? Instead of it just being me, it's like, wow, it's so much better with all of us. So Dollhouse is a is a, a collection of women that mm -hmm. cosplay, and what kind of promotions is it? Promotions for the cos the cosplay, or is it promotion for anything? It's mostly like been for for cosplay. We're slowly trying to branch out, mm -hmm. but still everybody has day jobs. Yeah, but we've um, so far we're doing like a yearly event, which is open to the public. And they kind of introduced people to cosplay, which we did a 90s party. Mm -hmm. And it was at a brewery in um, D.C. Barely say that word. <laughs> mm -hmm. was, and, it, was it about, like, the, the smokehouse? Um, Ivy uh, City? What's it called? Rhode Island Avenue? Okay. Yeah, it's over somewhere. Not not too far. Because bringing the cosplay... I like bringing everybody together. So we brought mm -hmm. the cosplayers together. And that's when I had Taz. She performed a lot of other musical artists. I was like, wow, you get to check out music artists. You get to meet other cosplayers, food vendors, regular vendors. So every year we do an event like that to bring everyone together. And then um, around December, of course, we do toy drives. And then amongst ourselves and some friends, we kind of do like a regular um, collect like clothes, blankets, and take it to the um, homeless shelter. I forgot what that road yeah. is. That's dope. I, that, but downtown. So, so that's... I think a lot of people should, um, I think they get a business and think they're just going to make money. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And not figure out like, hey, like it's bigger than just profiting. It's more of like giving back. And I think that's dope that you, you and, and the other ladies um, are knocking that down and, you know, bringing people together. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people, I'm from Detroit, so like a lot of people oh. don't really, you know what I mean? It's It's good now. But a lot of people don't like bringing what I've noticed here. They don't like coming together. There's always a section that, that don't like another section or, you know what I mean? And they don't yeah. ever want to, like, work together. And I think that's where a lot of the downfall be in the DMV. Um, and I've noticed that as well because yeah. I've been at other groups, not a part of it, just hung around. And it's always, hey, this event is $30, $40. But it's just, you know, a party. And then I also have to pay for drinks and this mm -hmm. and that. So all our events have been free. So I will speak to the venue and we have a pretty good rapport. So if you're getting into an event for free, you're spending your money on food, some merchandise and drinks. Yeah. Therefore, everybody is getting paid. And since they're making a lot of money, then they're like, hey, we'll do this event free for you. Hey, you can use my venue for free. I'll bring my food truck out for free. So it kind of helps out. So, no, we're not making any money, but we're enjoying it. Yeah, but it's 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 going to come back to y'all because, mm -hmm. like, you're you're looking back and you're reaching out to the community. You know what I mean? You're taking care of the community. A lot of people don't want to take care of the community. They just want to get, get theirs and go. Mm -hmm. But y'all doing this free event every year. And, you know what I mean? It's building rapport and building relationships. Yes. Hence, relationships worth more than money. Um. And getting our name out there. Exactly. So once people see what we can bring them, mm -hmm. then later on, yes, we could probably charge maybe 5 or $10. But I'm always keep the price low because I yeah. don't want to hit people over the head with, boom, this much money. Yeah. And and that's the thing, too. Um, you have to you have to set set your goals and set your feet in, in, in the sand and get dirty. Mm -hmm. But you also know that you like, hey, I'm doing it for free. You know what I mean? To to get your name out there. And a lot of people don't. And that can go for anything. Music, uh, marketing, anything that you're doing. If you're not trying to, like, get your feet dirty, get your feet wet, you know what I mean? Like, getting out there, then that's always going to be an issue. Because it's like, if you're trying to go at it for just the money, it's never going to really last. So I commend y'all for that. Commend you for that. Um, Thank you. Military. We talked a little bit about it. Um. 
What year did you join? I joined in 04 at 17. Oh, so you joined with me? Same, same year. Same year. Well, I, I joined in 03, but I didn't go to boot camp to 04. Okay. Okay, I went to boot camp 04. Yeah, okay. And, and you graduated 04? 04. Okay. What made you want to do the military? Not Was it the parents? No, it wasn't the parents, but I just saw, because I graduated from Oxon Hill, and I just saw everything going on around me, and it was just really nothing there. Yeah. It was just, I just didn't want to be a product of my environment. I was like, mm-hmm. wow, I don't have any money for college. I'm working at Six Flags like everybody else. Yeah. I was like, yeah, this sucks. I'm, I'm joining the military. So I made sure I signed up while I was still in high school. Mm-hmm. So once I graduated, went straight to boot camp. I was probably home for like two weeks and left. In the summer? Like, so you didn't mm-hmm. really have a, like a good summer, like after high school parties and stuff. Like, you oh, didn't no. do none of that. I know, just graduated. Joined, like, once I went to boot camp and yeah. then training, they sent me straight to Italy. Wow. And I was like, dang, I, I don't get to say goodbye to nobody. Straight after that, training. That was it. Like, dang. At least we get, like, I mean, we come home at the boot camp, but then, yeah, after that, yeah, you're going to wherever. I went to Cali. So, yeah, it's, it's At least the same. you was like a, a phone call away. I was in the future. I would I would have loved to move to Italy. Like I my, so you know like for how they do us, they always ask us like in our job or MOS school, they ask you overseas west coast or east coast. That's how you pick like where ah. they're going to send you. So like you put it in that order and then from that order 9 times out of 10 if you don't get your first one, you're going to get your second one. You're guaranteed the second one. So I put overseas west coast east coast and um a lot of other people put east coast Overseas, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast, overseas. So when I did that, um, I wanted to go to Japan because I knew we had a base over there. And uh, so I was like, damn, I ain't getting to Japan. Nobody went out of my class. So I ended up getting West Coast. So I, I was happy because, I mean, okay. I've never been to Cali. You know what I mean? And I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like, palm trees everywhere. And the weather was amazing coming from Detroit. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, you was in Detroit, yeah. Yeah, the that weather was, was yeah, big change. But I loved it. Um, but Italy, I was Italy. Oh, I loved it in Italy. It was, I mean, okay, one, the drink age was 18. Oh, so for the, real? Mm-hmm. Which is wine, but it opened me up to like a whole new culture. Because yes, I was a little military brat, mm-hmm. but that was just all through the U.S. mostly. But being over there, just meeting a lot of the locals and everything was just super relaxed. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'm coming from a fast-paced D.C. where I'm over here. And you sit at a restaurant and you're like, okay, I'm ready to order. And they're like, oh, we wait. And I'm like, okay, we just, you're supposed to sit, talk, sip some wine. Yeah. Then you tell them your order whenever they get there. And you're like, oh, yeah, let me get the spaghetti. They making the noodles real right quick. They're dropping in the hot water. So you're going to be there for so some time. So it's kind of like Vapiano's. You ever been to Vapiano's here mm-hmm. in D.C.? Nice. It's closed now, man. I'm so mad. Like, mm-hmm. they literally used to make the pasta. You can see them. It's like a window. But it, it was kind of like Chipotle. They make it right in front of you. You know what I mean? They make everything right in front of you. So you get, like, I used to get this called Granche di Fuime. It was like a uh, crawfish, crawfish, and I add shrimp, and I add uh, broccoli to it. Oh, that sounds good. And I used to get like, you can pick all your different, any kind of noodles. And I used to get, uh, instead of everybody getting like the penny, I get like the uh, the farfellis, little bow ties. Mm-hmm. And um, they, you would see it, they'll put it in there and then they'll dip it. It'll just dip down like automatically in the uh, water or whatever. Oh, so it was fresh. It fresh. was nice, man. But they 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 shut them down for for trafficking. They, I guess they was trafficking line, money laundering or something. It was something crazy. And it was, they had like two or three spots. One was in Chinatown. That's the one I used to always go to. And I had one, I think, on 8th Street, too. But yeah, I'm Dang. talking about it was nice. And then they had, so they had, that was the, that was the uh, pasta line. They had a pizza line. They had a salad Ooh. line, too. So, like, you can get them to make whatever. So, I missed yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. it don't matter what restaurant I go out here, Italian, authentic Italian, or even if I make it at home. Yeah. Nothing tastes the same like that. Over there, yeah. Rolling out that pasta yep. and then making it, like, so yep. fresh. You're like, oh, my God, it's so good. So, so how long How long were you in, in Italy? Mm, so I was there for 
like a year and a half. And then from there, they sent me straight to Afghanistan. Hmm. And then I came back yeah. and was finished up my tour in Italy. I'm like, how you can make me deploy from Italy? Like, Yeah, you were that, already pretty much deployed. Yeah, yeah, that was like, but that deployment time counted as my tour in Italy. I'm like, dude, I want to stay in Italy. Yeah. But they let me stay like a little bit longer to out process and get ready for your next duty station, which wasn't too bad. It was Virginia Beach over at Fort Story or Little Creek. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I know we use in the Army. How does it work for us? Um, like, we call it PCS. Y'all yeah, call it PCS? We call it PCS. Like, do they give y'all like a certain amount of time before y'all like? Can like y'all get like vacation, get leave before mm-hmm. y'all can like? It's probably exactly it's the, same. the same as yours. Yeah, because I know like for us, like if when I came back, I was supposed to go to Japan, and mm-hmm. I came back from Iraq the second time. But me and um, Benita, we wasn't married at the time, so uh-huh. my girl's mom. So when they gave me the orders, it was gonna be on the company, and I was like, no, nah, uh-huh. like, I don't want to do that. So. I ended up switching my orders to get stationed here in Quantico. Then we got married once we got here to Quantico or whatever. But yeah, like that, okay. that's why I was like, I was like, how do, how do y'all stuff work? Because you know, everybody's had their own number mm-hmm. system of MOS and it, like 88 Mike Mike is our 3531, which I, which what that's what I was, uh, motor transport operator. My dad's the same on MOS. Yeah. So which like, is crazy. I, I was 88 November, which is, the one that did the paperwork yeah, for admin. 88 and, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. So we had our admins is 01s. Like they start 01 something, 01 51. Oh, I was in a motor pool doing <laughs> admin the motor for them. For them. Dang. Yeah. Before I had to drive a forklift or be a driver. Yeah. So I'm like real, real close to my dad. Yeah. But he was the 88 Mike. That's dope. And your mom was what? She was, um, what do you call it, like S1? The, oh, yeah, the, the admin. Office, the the admin, admin yeah, the admin, admin. Admin. Yeah, that she was 0101. Yeah, she was an admin. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then you said she was a drill instructor and your dad was what? No, my dad was a drill instructor. My mom was a recruiter. But if you meet them, you would have thought she was. She... <laughs> That's crazy. So me and mom yeah. was a recruiter and your dad was a drill instructor. Mm-hmm, okay. You look cool. at them. My mom, the mean one. My dad, he's 6'3 and mm-hmm. slim. And my mom's like about five five, like a little bit taller than me. Mm-hmm. And she'll be coming in like, "Did you do the dishes? And you need to do this." And it, you're with like, the knife hand. What's up with the knife hand? Yeah. Until I got to the military, I'm you understood like, it. "Okay, yeah, yeah." I'm like, but daddy don't use the knife hand. Cause we 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 chill. That's how I am with my daughters. I don't. I don't even. I don't do, <laughs> I don't do all of that. Cause literally, once I'm done here, I'm I'm about to go be softball coach with the girls. So it's Aww. like. Yeah. That's adorable. Yeah, so it's I don't really I got girls and I and I feel like me having the girls, it calmed me way down because I was on like 10 uh, from being in the Marines and being deployed. Like you really start seeing when the PTSD kick in and you mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And um the girls having the girls help me it calmed me down. And that's like that's I can't scary. be I can't be yelling at them. Like if I had boys. A whole different thing. But the girls, and they just, it's like funny. Like, I dropped them off today, and it's like, I can't do nothing but just laugh. And I'm like, dang, man. Like, I wanted a boy so bad, but these girls take care of me, and they make me laugh day in and day out. So it's, it's dope. Like, and you got you got a son, right? Yeah, I have a son. So it was, my dad had four girls, and it was like, dang. So he definitely had, yeah, that's five girls. women. Yeah. Did y'all have uh, any pets? Girls. See? You know what I'm saying? So being that, the yeah. only male he, he in the, the only man. He had to be chill. And then his girls had boys. That's crazy. Yeah. So now he, he got he got all the grandsons. Yeah. That's crazy. Which, which is nice because yeah. I was like, wow, we about to swamp you with girls. Yeah. Cause that now that would have been even crazier. Like he now he got granddaughters, he got daughters, and his wife. And you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> he ain't got lot. no time. So now he can talk sports with them. You know what I mean? Get them, get them, yeah. get, take them to the little games and stuff like that. Even though, like, you can take your daughters to the games, but they got to be, like, my youngest, she just want to go to the games for, like, food. My oldest, she yeah. actually wants to look at the game. She's like, Daddy, when are you going to take me to a Ravens game? When are you going to take me to another, you know what I'm saying? So the funny thing is, my dad's not a sports guy. He's just strictly comics and nerds. Yeah. But the women in my family, from my grandmother, on the, 
We're all sports. I'm a Miami Dolphin. My sister's a Colts. The other one is the Titans, which Monday we was arguing. Yeah, because that's, that that's, a, that's a rivalry, right? Isn't that? No, we just had a game Monday. That had me. I was oh, here. Oh, yeah. Oh, my rival. I, oh, yeah, y'all played the Titans, Patriots, right? Patriots and the Bills. But we played the Titans this past Monday, and we lost. And I was mad. Y'all ain't got a quarterback. Yeah, we need to... You need to let him lay down and get a new quarterback. I mean, he he got guaranteed ninety million. He might as well he might as well go ahead and just dip. But yeah, it's like I love to, but he keep doing stupid stuff. Like you're you're I, supposed to slide, not yeah. But it's it's just weird that every other quarterback is doing the same thing he does. It's just like his body just like fragile. Yeah, it's, it's like fragile, and it's like it's like his equilibrium is off. Because every time he get tackled, it just looks weird. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, he just ball like, up yeah. like newspaper. It's, like, it's just like he crumbles up. And I'm like, yo, like I've seen so many quarterbacks, like i.e. Jaden Daniels, which is a rookie. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, he's he's a rookie, but he's smaller than Tua. And, like, he get hit. And I, it's like a regular hit. Like, But it's, it's like every time Tua gets hit. It, he just... And I'm like, dang. Yeah, it's like you go on like a cardiac arrest or something. Like, and I'm like, dog, what's I'm like, can we go back to Dan Marino days? Yeah. But I was telling somebody, I was telling somebody y'all should go get Russ. Someone was telling me that because I've been just looking at the different quarterbacks. I'm like, we just need somebody new. Just put put um Tua on the bench, just let him rest, let him get his yeah. money. Maybe come back a couple yeah. years. Yeah. Or, I was t- or Cam Newton. Yeah. You know, like Cam? I think it'd be I'm, good for y'all. I'm still on the... Yeah, it would be good for us. I'm still on the fence about him. I got, like, this little love-hate for Cam. It's like, I like him, but then he... His personal life, he just be too much. And yeah. it And be like, no, I need my, my dolphins to just be at home, mind your business. Yeah. Stay on social media. Because it wasn't too many... I don't know a flashy dolphin player. Not like, really. The flashies we have is Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill. And he's not really that flashy. Nah, he just... Drive nice car. Everybody drives nice cars. So exactly. yeah, and then his house caught on fire. That part too. Yeah, yeah. but other than that, we're not in the news. Yeah, Nobody, we mind our business. Yeah, I think I think it's yeah that is a gift and a curse. But that's why I say a Russ first though. If y'all got mm-hmm. Russ, yeah, you know I, mean? I like Russ more than Cam. Okay, I will take that. I mean, but I'm saying for for because I would say Russ because. One, Russ already, he's already getting paid from the Broncos $47 million. Mm-hmm. So he's chilling. He don't, like, y'all can go sign him for, like, the league minimum, whichever that is. If it's, like, a million or three million, y'all ain't losing a lot of money. And, and it's a it's it's a one-year thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, do, do like, a one-year yeah. so that Tua can rest up. But, and the thing, crazy thing is Tua's, like, 26. All them concussions. Yeah. I really, to be honest, I think he might need to stop playing. All together, yeah. he's too young for all them concussions. My my only thing is though, it's like when you play football, you you gonna get concussions. Well, yeah, you know what you signing up. For. You know what you signing up for. You gonna you gonna get concussions. I I feel like my first concussion, I was like in Powell League. I was a kid. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I stopped after ninth grade playing football um, and just stuck with baseball. But I know for a fact there is multiple players that had that same amount of concussions. Yeah. It's just his just, just looks so different. Like, it looks, like, super damaging to like, his... Like, he wasn't supposed to be playing this sport. Yeah, Maybe this ain't, this ain't your sport. Yeah, something. this ain't your sport. You might as well go play tennis or something. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because this ain't it. But, you know, I hope he gets better. Because I do too. like to see him. Because um, it was exciting watching Miami. Him throw the ball to, to Waddle yeah. and Tyreek. And... I get excited for the games. Yeah. and. You know, when there's, like, games Monday night or whenever it's the night games, I have my, like, Miami Dolphin onesies on. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, this is how you watch the game. Drinking out my little Miami Dolphin, little coffee cup. Yeah. But then there's a bar called the Admiral at, at DuPont. Mm-hmm. A whole bunch of Miami fans. Is that the and, one that's below? Below the uh, ground? Like, it's, like, in no, the basement? No, it's above ground. Okay. It's above ground. It's DuPont. You might be talking about the Saints. Remember Front Page? The uh the the um brunch spot that everybody used to go to it used to be a sports bar right up under it. Oh, I know what you're talking about. And it had like about. a it was like a sports bar. It had like it had like uh basketball hoop shooting. It. It okay, was like, yeah, we're yeah. not there. Okay, I yeah, forgot I the name of it though. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many new places. 
It's crazy. It, it's a lot. Yeah. You see, just keep. So Admiral is like the Dolphins place? Mm-hmm, because we used to have the Black Fin, but now that's, I don't know if it's the Chiefs or the 49ers, because I was just driving past, I just saw so much red, and I was like, where's our new bar at? Yeah. And they um, changed it. It was like two years ago when they, because we used to always have it, but we have that, and we have another place down, it's another downtown, it's like a little hole in the wall, but they mm-hmm. got the best fish tacos, and it'd be like the- That'd be the best spots, though. Yeah, it's a little, but then you got the little TV up in the ceiling, just yeah. little, it might as well be a box TV. Everybody crowded up, you drinking a beer, and you're like, yeah. Watching a game in mm-hmm. a little TV. So we playing the Patriots, then yeah, I'm in the little hole in the wall joint. Yeah. Everything else, then I'm going to go to the, the nice Admirals where I'm sitting down and eat my little brunch and some steak. Yeah. But there, you ain't getting no, no bar elbow space. You just a pool of fans. Yeah, I feel you, man. Y'all seen the Real Love gear that I've been wearing in some of the episodes. Uh, my guy, Big John, over at Real Love Fam, then laced me with some good promo code for you guys to go and get your own merch. Because only you can love what you love as much as you love it here at Real Love. Hit the link in the promo code. It's RWMTM Love. RWMTM love you get five dollars off on the whole website with that uh code hit that special code rwmtm love and there will be a special collaboration merch with rwmtm and rare love connected so the logo is going to be connected stay tuned for that and uh yeah it's gonna be fire because yeah, i'm a raven fan you know <clears throat> okay. yeah, we had we had a little rough start but we, we back I knew it was going to take some time to get invested with Derek. Oh, I love y'all defense. Yeah. Last year, I was just so... We was, we was supposed to be in the Super Bowl. You was. That's why I was just like, this don't yeah. make sense. I'm doing the math. I'm like, did I carry the one? Y'all should have been in the Super yeah. Bowl. Your defense is like that. Yeah. We, and we got better. That's the, that's the crazy thing. Like, no, you good, you good. We, we got better. We got better. And um, let me see. We got... 30, 25, we good. Yeah, okay. We good. Um, I mean, you just told me about our man. That was your favorite, right? Oh, so, so, so yeah. So, you know, shout out, shout out to my, my Marines that got me, got me this, uh, what you call it? Collage. Collage. That's it. So, yeah, Iron Man, man, it's just always been, that's, he's been like the dopest one before Avengers. It was mm-hmm. him, like, and I used to, I used to collect com- comic books as a kid, and my mom threw them joints away. Like I'm talking about, I had like mint condition Wolverine, X Men, mm-hmm. X Men, and and Avengers, Iron Man, and them was my favorite comics, and she threw them joints away. And yeah, you got those parents is like, okay, he's past, I don't know, eight years old. Yeah. You outgrew this trash. Yeah, and and then you know, like the comics was like a dollar fifty. They mm-hmm. were super cheap. And like I used to go to the store, it was because I'm from eight mile, it was like right on nine mile back home. And um I used to go there like every weekend and buy like one comic. Cause that's I hated reading re- regular books. Mm-hmm. I love magazines and comics. Like, like that's what interests me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now I, I listen to audiobooks, but um Iron Man, man, he just like to me, just like he's that guy. Like, and this is I hate the way they killed him off, like. And oh I'm, yeah, for that and then yeah. I'm trying to see what storyline they're going with, but I mean, he didn't die he does, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the comic book. Mm-hmm, but he, but in a multiverse, he does become Doctor Doom, which I I'm open minded to because I love me some Doctor Doom. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I collected comics, but I collected for some reason, like when my dad would take me to the comic book store, he'll be like. You want Harley Quinn, you want Catwoman, you want Storm, just pushing like female oh, yeah, characters yeah. on me. I collect the Punisher. Ooh, Punisher I collect some nice all too. Frank Castle yeah. comics. Yeah. Punisher was crazy. He was, he, I'm mad that he didn't have a cartoon like that. He had one, but it didn't last long. I get to see the cartoon. But I would, now I gotta go, go on YouTube. Yeah, like he had a cartoon. Because yeah. I, I was watching the X-Men. Yeah. Every time I came on, that music started playing. Yeah. That's why I like that X-Men 97. It brings that whole nostalgia. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And I, and I haven't watched it yet because I, I know. No, I haven't watched it. But I know once I do, I ain't gonna wanna watch nothing else. Because that was, it was, it was X-Men, it was, uh, 
from the other one. I don't know. Like, there was a lot of superheroes. Yeah, there was a lot of superheroes. Of course, Batman. Oh, yeah. You, know, you, had, um, you had Batman. You had Superman. You had uh, Flash. Okay, yes. We yeah, did have Flash. We had Flash. We had a bunch of... That's why I'm like, nowadays, these kids don't... I see why they just be on their they iPads and stuff. Because, like, they don't really have no TV shows. You know what I'm saying? And then but, they started coming out with some good ones. Yeah. And they I, I, them. Yeah, because I like the the Amazing World of Gun, um, Gumball. I was watching it with my son. I'm like, oh, this is good. Adventure yeah. time. They start having some pretty good stories where I was invested. And then... Yeah, they just get rid of them. Like, I think all they got now is what, Rick and Morty? Yeah, we, we still have Rick and Morty. Just wait for the next season. That's like an adult mm-hmm. show. You know what I mean? And they already seen by then. Yep, Simpsons been still out. Still got the Simpsons, but. Since like, what, 85? Yeah, for the longest. And I still watch the Simpsons. Yeah. I'm up to date. Yep. It's the Cleveland show went away, and that one was good. Yeah, Family and then Guy. You got Family Guy. I like American Dad more. First, I was Team Family Guy, but then it just got started getting dumb, and American Dad started having like better storylines. And it was more relatable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely more yeah. relatable. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, Iron Man got my man. So I got that from my uh, a good friend I met by my daughter's school and over there by Georgetown. He had a whole oh, toy yeah. store, like. Of all collective items, and I'm mad he just closed down oh. in in Northwest. Uh, I gotta find out where he moved, but he had like old school, like Nintendos, Nintendo sixty fours. Oh, he had the classics. He classics. had he had like um, VR troopers, uh, He Man. He like t- toys still in the oh. box, so like that one's never been open. And I when I saw it, I'm like, man, how much is this? I'm like, let me get it. It was like forty bucks. I'm it like, was worth it. Yeah, maybe it'd be more worth more later on. Later on. on. But I was like, I like this. I got a Japanese writing on it. Yeah, story. I, I was like seeing that. I was like, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. But do, do you play games too? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, I play, you know. Yeah, I see the PS5. Yeah, it was yeah. blending in yeah, perfectly. Yeah, yeah, I play PS4. I play, uh, so my my favorite, I think it's like, I don't know, I just got tired of it, but the Batman Arkham Asylum. I've been watching Walkers. That looks so good. Yeah, that was dope. But he coming out with another one. Um, Spider Man is dope. Yeah, that joint is dope. I haven't got the yeah. new one, but the the one the one last year that came out was crazy. Yeah, I've been of playing course, that, course. trying to get all my trophies. Trying to get all my uniforms, the uh, the outfits. I was trying to get all the outfits because it's like twenty some outfits. So yeah, I play. Of course, you know Madden and all the sports games. And a little bit of fight, Mortal Kombat. You gotta, you gotta play them. That's classic. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I want Mortal Kombat because I'm okay with it. Yeah. But a friend of mine, because me and her had met and we just like hit it off. Met her at a con. I'm like, oh, look at you I take pictures with her. I'm like, oh, okay. Pictures. And then finding out that she's the um the number one Mortal Kombat player. Wow. I was like, and, and she in DC in a DMV. No, she's um. Yeah, she's a flight attendant, so she's like everywhere. everywhere. But yeah, but me and her exchange numbers and everything. And then like later on, I'm like, girl, hold on. Is that you in that Meg Stein video? Not the most recent one, but the one before mm-hmm. that where she was, uh, no, it was the Amazon commercial mm-hmm. where she was dressed up as an anime character. Then she had the headset playing a video game against another girl. And that was her. And I'm wow. like, you the champion? So with the cosplay, I'm meeting... So many different so it's bigger than it's bigger than just the, the outfits. It's like really dope, genuine people. Is it and it uh, puts um builds a bridge for us mm-hmm. because I'm into like anime, but I'm also into video games. And then I go to a, a con where they have like a gaming tournament. And I'm like, oh yeah, let me get you know, let me play some more combat. And then I was like, hold on, that person over there playing a game. He looked familiar, and it was Chloe Thompson from. That movie Holes from the Disney Channel. Wow. I was like, here, he, he was playing the championship. Yeah. You'd be just running into like different like celebrities. You would never know. I got I gotta go to one. I definitely gotta go to one. So like this year, um, my daughters they love um Halloween and Christmas. They get that's their favorite holidays. Mm-hmm. So this year I was like, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna dress up like I did before. Like one year I dressed up as Deadpool. With the girls, and they were like little, they was like little, like five, four years old. So I, um, I got a ghillie suit. 
Yeah, so that was my my youngest like, Daddy, what is this? Like, what? It's like, oh, this look dope. How are you? What is it? And I'm like, it's a ghillie suit. They're like, what is it? And I'm like, it's a scout sniper. Like, this is what they wear <laughs> when they out in the like in the woods or wherever. They get accustomed to they they surroundings. They they wear certain things that match the colors there. <laughs> They're like, I want to be that now. I want to be that. Oh so, my God. So now my youngest probably going to get a ghillie suit. She's like, Daddy, I'm about to give me a ghillie suit. I said, You got to get the little Nerf gun too. You got to get the little Nerf that. sniper. You know what I mean? They got a bunch of them though. So all they got to do is just wrap the little uh, camouflage around their sniper. And, then, uh, and you can find, there's some camouflage ones too. Yeah, I just, the crazy thing is, I just ordered um, the uh, camouflage for the gun. Like oh, the, the stuff, like that look like, good. yeah, because it got like little like pieces falling off, like it looks like you're like, oh, bush or so it looks legit. Yeah, 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 I yeah, like that. yeah. so yeah, so the, the costumes, man, I got I gotta get into the cosplay, man. and that's why yeah. I, I really wanted to interview you because I wanted to dive into it because I didn't know, I don't know about, I know about it, I don't know, like you would like you would love like Blurcon because it's black nerds and. There's so many levels of the dressing up. You got people that are like hardcore, spent mm -hmm. months building, crafting, robot, all that stuff. Yeah. People with more materials, sewing, or somebody with a hoodie on and it's got Deadpool on it. And they're like, oh, hey, I'm here. And everybody's welcome. And they're like, hey, we're about to go get some to eat. You want to come? Whole line of food trucks. Because, you know, nerds love to eat. Oh, my God, I drink some more. <laughs> nerds love to eat. Yeah. But everybody is like super, super friendly. Where they'll see you and they'll be like, oh, hey, we got to go, you know, get some drink. Do you drink whiskey? We got whiskey. Oh, we're going to go to this panel. And a lot of celebrities come. Like, I got to meet the cast of um, Steven Universe. And then, of course, Chris Summers. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows Chris Summers because yeah. she has that real scratchy voice. Susie Carmichael from Rugrats. Wow. So, and she's been there like three times. So I got to meet her. This past um, July, I got to meet the Black Ranger yeah. and the Black girl that's the Pink Ranger. Mm -hmm. And then meet her finally. We had the same birthday. I was like, oh, snap. Yeah. Not Pink, Pink Ranger, Yellow Ranger. Black girl's the Yellow Ranger. Yeah. But you get to meet like... Pink was the Asian girl, right? Yeah. yeah. No, Pink was the white girl. The yellow, I would say the yellow one's the minority yeah, ranger because yeah. it was the Asian girl and it was the black girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you just meet them and they'll be like, oh, hey, what's up? Take some pictures. Y'all at the after party. Y'all go get something to eat. And you're like, oh, God, I got to have the yellow ranger. We got some pictures. Yeah, that's dope, man. And, and that's, that's, that's exactly why I wanted to get you on the show because, you know what I mean? Relationships mean. A lot. It means a lot to you know. Mm -hmm. I mean? Me. It means a lot to the world. Like if you don't know, it's not about what you know. It's about who you know. And you know, like you never know. Like these cosplay things. Like you're saying, you got all of this stuff. And you you meet somebody. You networking. You build a rapport. All of these yes. things make sense. But before we get out of here, I always do this thing called gym class. Not G Y M, G E M. What is a gym that you can leave with? You know with the relatives or, um, you know, like a, a saying that you always say or uh, something that they can put in a toolbox, like with some gems. So I always say this, I know everybody heard this, it's a classic, but um, you attract more flies with honey. I'm always saying that to my mom with the little jackhammer knife and to other people, because um, there's a lot of different cosplayers, a lot of people that have this big following on Facebook, TikTok, everything. Like, I have a big following. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you have to be a nice person. You genuinely have to be kind because you never know where you're at or who you're going to meet. Mm -hmm. And some people are very arrogant and whatnot. But what really makes my day is when I meet people at cons and they're like, oh my God, you're my favorite cosplayer. You're always just so nice. And you actually talk to me. And I'm like, I'm no bigger than anybody else. Right. And so if I meet somebody, sure, I'll take a picture with you and little chit chat. They're like, oh, I love your hair. Where did you get it done at? Or how can I improve this cosplay? And people slide in my DMs, ask some questions. And I have no, um, no problem talking to people if I have time. Mm -hmm. But I'll see other people that I run into at these um, functions, like these 
TikTok or these YouTube ones where you have to have minimum 100K to be at these events. Wow. And a lot of them are just stuck up. Stuck up in arrogance where they're like, yeah, why are they bothering me? And they're like, really mean. Yeah. Like, why are you mean? Like, there's no need to be like this because we're all. If social media, the internet drops and there's no more internet, Mm -hmm. and I walk down the street and I see you at Chipotle, I don't know who the heck you are. Yeah. Are you going to be like, oh, I have a printout. Once ago, I used to have. Like, no, just be genuinely nice. It gets you a long, long way. All right, hold on real quick. Because I had 37 minutes on here. Did it stop? Are we good? We still got 11 minutes. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. We still got 11 minutes. So, what was the gym again? Never. Oh, you attract more flies with honey. You attract more flies with honey. Never heard that one. Oh yeah! Oh my God! I never heard that one. I got that from my grandmother. I thought yeah. I never heard that. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure if I asked my aunt, she definitely heard it, but I never heard that one. Like you attract more flies with honey. Like, mm-hmm, baby, that's what you. Yeah. <laughs> what you do? Because they like something that's sweet and genuine mm-hmm. versus, yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, once again, I appreciate you for coming. Um, shout out to you. Uh, and I hope you keep keep killing the game with the cosplay Thanks. and everything that you do um, for the community, um, giving back to the community. And uh, this might, you know, I always do these too, is because you never know. Like it might be a kid out there that you know what I mean. I want to do this. It might be an adult that's out there that want to do this. And, you know, um, doing these these interviews it definitely helps because I get so many views, um, and people always comment. So. Uh, be on the lookout. Yeah, you can do this at any age because a lot of people say, "Hey, this is this is for kids. Why are you? You could be two years old, or you could be two hundred years old. I mean, I'm thirty nine, and I'm still doing mm-hmm. this. Yeah. So let you, you know, you're never birthday too, old. too, right? <laughs> yeah, happy birthday, happy belated birthday. You're leaving. Yes. My birthday is September. Oh, yeah, September 19th. Okay. Just made it. Yeah. Virgo. Yeah, Virgo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy birthday. Appreciate it. But um, like always, relationships worth more than money. We out.